Danny White has made his hire. It's going to be Kim Caldwell. Thoughts, immediate reactions, and why this is so Danny White. All that and more on a Monday, Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Balls. We're a part of Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every single day. I'm your host, Eric Kane. Appreciate you guys for being here. Appreciate LinkedIn for being a part of the show. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. Got a fun show coming up today. We're going to react. Let's get some, get some raw reactions here to the news of the hiring of Kim Caldwell, the Lady Balls basketball program head coach. We'll get into that here in a matter of seconds. Spring football update in segment two and get you guys caught up on what you missed over the weekend. Tennessee winning on the Plains at Auburn. Series win for the first time since 2005. Every day is getting to the show without you. Thanks so much. Reagan Lockdown Ball is your first listen, your first watch. You can download, follow, subscribe, all that for free wherever you get your podcast. So uh, initial thoughts on Kim Caldwell being tabbed as the Lady Vols basketball coach. Now, my first thought was, man, where there's smoke, there's usually a fire. And how many, I mean, there was no real reports, if you will, not many at least, um, coming out saying that, hey, you know, Kim Caldwell is going to be the be, be the hire, be the hire. But there's a lot of, hey, Kim Caldwell is kind of emerging. She's interviewing. Um, didn't find a whole lot of other names when kind of going through this coaching search for, Dan, for Danny White to see who's going to be Lady Ball basketball coach. So, her name was all the way around. A lot of people thought it was going to be a smoke screen kind of going out there and everybody's talking about her, but Danny White's getting a business and, and, and going and hiring somebody else. But no, it, it was announced on Sunday afternoon that Kim Caldwell is going to lead the lady ball program. So initial thought is where there's smoke, there's usually a fire, right? Second initial thought, boy, oh boy, is this a Danny White hire? Is this a Danny White hire? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Kim Caldwell coming over from Marshall, where she spent one season as a Division I head coach. It was a really, really good one. 17-1 in Sunbelt Conference play, Sunbelt Coach of the Year. Um, she improved a team that went 17-14 and 9-9 and in conference play from a year ago before she got there to 26-7 and in her one season at Marshall. She was the regular... Marshall was the regular season Sunbelt champs and the tournament champs. Okay, she took them to an NCAA tournament. Now they got blown out by Virginia Tech, 92-49 to in that 4-12 seed matchup. But it was a really, really good year for Kim Caldwell. But it was one year. It was one year at Marshall. Now, she came from Division Two. Glenville State. Now, you know, Glenville State is a team that I played at football when I was at Carson Newman. Played them one of my years, and I remember um, they came down here. We didn't go up there, but that's how I knew of that school's name, and and that's her alma mater, and she spent seven seasons coaching there at Glenville State, and she had a really, really good record, 191-24. and 24. In seven seasons, she lost 24 games. Again, that's really good. Division two. she won a national championship while there, part of her seven seasons. Again, I mentioned that's um, her alma mater. Um, she also had previous stops at Ohio Valley and Sacramento State. Um, but this is a Danny White hire. Why? Well, because he hired Nate Oates while at Buffalo. Nate Oates a decade ago, he just played, he just coached in the Final Four this weekend. But a decade ago, Nate Oates was coaching high school basketball. Lance Leopold was a Division Three, very successful coach, but he was a Division Three football coach. Those two hires were made by Danny White while he was at Buffalo. Oh, yeah, he brought Scott Frost to UCF. I didn't think that he did that. For some reason, I forgot, but I was doing research on Danny White after you know Tennessee announced his hiring of Kim Caldwell. I went through there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he did hire Scott Frost to UCF. And boy, was that a good one. Hired Josh Heupel at UCF, um, who had no prior head coaching experience. He had some... Obviously, some big-time assistant positions at Power 5, Missouri OC, quarterbacks coach, Oklahoma, all that and more, but brought Josh Heupel to succeed Scott Frost at UCF. 
So Scott Frost was a hire. Nate Oates was a hire. Lance Leipold was a hire. Josh Heupel was a hire. All those guys have gone on to be pretty good. And I'm not trying to set the bar too high for Kim Caldwell, but this is very much a Danny White type hire, kind of flying under the radar, kind of finding an up-and-comer, which is something in terms of a direction that I didn't think he'd go in. Hats off. He doesn't talk to anybody. Uh, there were not a whole lot of leaks from the Tennessee side in terms of this process. I thought in firing Kelly Harper after her fourth 21 season, a year removed of going back-to-back Sweet 16 appearances, that's not good enough at Tennessee, as we talked about on the show last week. But I thought that since he's willing to part ways with that, that he was going to go out and, and try to get a proven winner. Now, Don Staley's not coming to coach here. Some of these, you know, Gino's not coming to coach here. Good Lord, <laughs> that would not be a good idea. But nonetheless, you know what I'm saying? Like some of those big-time proven coaches in the women's game were going to come here. But I did think he'd go out and get somebody that found success at a sitting Power 5 spot. That was not the direction that he went in. So this is very much a Danny White hire. Very much a Danny White hire. Uh, this is his quote sent out and released in Tennessee when they announced the, uh, the hiring of Kim Caldwell. From the beginning, our goal has been to find a dynamic head coach who can restore our women's basketball program to national prom, uh, preeminence. Um, Kim Caldwell is the ideal person to lead us. Kim is a winning formula that she has successfully implemented everywhere she has coached with a fast page, high octane offense, a pressure defense that has led to a remarkable results. In this new era of college, of college sports, it was vital that we found an innovative head coach with a strong track record of winning titles. We are eager to return the Lady Vols to the championship level, and we're confident that Kim Caldwell is the coach who can lead us back to the top. That is Danny White on Kim Caldwell, Lady Vols' new basketball coach. This is what Caldwell had to say when she was quoted in the re release as well. Quote, I am honored and humbled to accept the role as the head coach of the historic program at the University of Tennessee. I can't help but reflect on accepting the Pat Summit Trophy three seasons ago and be moved by the great responsibility and opportunity but to now be leading the program upon the incredible Lady Vol tradition that she built. I'm so excited to get to work, and I can't wait to see what all we can accomplish together, end quote. So initial was where there's smoke, there's a fire. Second thoughts, thought 1B, if you will, was, boy, is this a Danny White hire, and thought 1C, if you will was finally you get out of the Lady Vol tree. It didn't necessarily have to stay in the family, okay? Caldwell becomes the fourth head coach in Lady Vol history in this era, succeeding, obviously, the late great Pat Summit, Holly Warlick, Kelly Harper. Now it's going to be Kim Caldwell. Kim Caldwell has no ties to the program. She's a winning coach. Um, and, and so I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see how this is going to work out. It's kind of got mixed reviews here on a Sunday into Monday. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people recognize that you just need opportunities. A lot of people recognize the hard work and the proven results that have gone on her resume, and I see that as well. I mean, look at this. Overall record is eight seasons as a head coach, 217 and 31. That's an 875 winning percentage. 149 and 13 in conference games. That's a winning percentage of over 900. Um, she's been a two-time National Coach of the Year. This past year, WBCA spalling Maggie Dixon into the late Division I Rookie Coach of the Year. And in 2022, when she was at uh, Glenville State, NCAA Division II National Coach of the Year, the Pat Summit Trophy. Um, she's won five different Conference uh, Coach of the Year honors, four when she was in the Mountain East Conference, that Division II ranks, and then obviously last year in the Sun Belt. Um, she's gone to eight NCAA tournaments, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the NCAA two level. One last year championships. She won in 2022 at Glenville State. Final fours. 2022 at Glenville State. 2023 also a semifinalist at Glenville State. Conference championships. She's won seven. Conference tournament championships. She's won five. And just the the work that she did in one year at Marshall, it's really really impressive. So we'll see what happens. Five year deal is what she's going to get. Uh, Brent Hubs over at VolQuest.com reported this on Sunday. Her contract will run through March 31st, 2029. It's going to pay her $750,000. Tennessee's paying $600,000 in a buyout to Marshall. So, obviously, you're talking about an investment. Within her contract, Caldwell will receive incentives of $60,000 for winning the SEC regular season, $30,000 for winning the SEC tournament, $25,000 for making the women's NCAA tournament, and $400,000 for winning 
a national championship. So your new head coach of the Tennessee Lady Vols basketball team is Kim Caldwell. I'm for it. I'm going to support her. Um, I'm intrigued to see how this plays out because, again, as I continue to say, this is a Danny White hire. And that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's very much a wait and see. The Lance Leopold experiment was very much wait and see. Look what he's doing now. Nate Oates, very much wait and see. Literally 10 years ago, coaching high school basketball. Very much wait and see. He just coached in the Final Four. Scott Frost, wait and see. Of course, it didn't work out in Nebraska. He's already been fired. Um, Josh Heupel, it's been pretty good so far. So, I like the track record. I do, but I'm very much in wait and see mode. Excited to see what she's going to bring here to Tennessee. But less than a week when the firing was announced of Kelly Harper, Tennessee has found its new leader of the historic, historic Lady Vols basketball program, and that is former Marshall head coach Kim Caldwell, now residing on a top, on a top, a top of Rocky Top. So excited to see what she can do. Hey, uh, when we come back, we'll give you a spring football update. That and a whole lot more. It's coming up next as we continue on here with Locked On Balls. I want to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just like any other job board, all right? LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion, more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals that you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is so easy that when you have this many quality candidates, so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. 2.5 million small businesses are currently using LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Talking Tennessee football, spring practice when we return right here on Locked On Vols. Segment number two of a Monday show. Appreciate you guys for being here. And also, I forgot to remind you in segment one, X Tuesday, coming up tomorrow. Anything you guys want to talk about? Any questions on the Lady Vols hire? Tennessee spring football, Tennessee baseball, Tennessee recruiting, basketball, all that and more at underscore Kaner, at Locked On Vols, and at. Um, um, on this YouTube channel right here, uh, a little bit more from Kim Caldwell than I want to that I left out in segment number one. Uh, Marshall just couldn't be more thrilled with uh, Kim Caldwell. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some bitter fans because it was such a great ride, but when you go to kind of like a mid level right that right like that, and you have all that success, you know that it's just kind of like a step, you know, a step in in the direction where you want to go. It's like it's like uh. <laughs> With all due respect, it's like TV reporters in this market here in Knoxville. Knoxville is an amazing market. It's like top 70. It's an amazing market. But, you know, I've worked in the media here in Knoxville for, you know, about about eight years now. And there's been so many just a rotation of sports reporters that have come across the three stations around here. And that's fine. A lot of them are really, really good at their jobs. But they've kind of come on and, and, and checked in and then continue to try to move up. And a lot of times they, they did that and had success, and I wish them the success. But like when, when, you, when you go and take a job and you have the success that you do at a, t a place like Marshall, you know it's not going to be for long. So sure, there's probably some bitter fans, but also Marshall was like just so thrilled for. This is what the Marshall women's basketball team tweeted Sunday afternoon. With great appreciation, the most historic season of program history, outright, outright Sunbelt champions, record number of program victories, first NCAA tournament appearance since 1997. Thank you, Coach Kim. And Kim Caldwell just returning the love. I love this team and this community so much. Thank you. This is uh, some stats from my buddy Osborne from earlier in the day. I can scroll back and find it. Um, let's see here. Again, won a Division II Natty at Glenville State in West Virginia, which is no easy task. Uh, won the Sun Belt regular season and tournament championship her lone year in Marshall. Marshall ranked, this is the one I wanted, Marshall ranked fourth in the nation and scoring offense and led the nation with nearly 32 attempted three pointers a game. Hello. That'll get you excited, right? 81st and three point field goal percentage, which you want to, you want that stat to be a little bit better, but if you're averaging 32 threes a game, I mean, you take 81% or 81 in the country, I guess. And then shot 33% from three as a team. Um, so yeah, a couple of, a uh, couple of stats there from, her one year at Marshall, and that's, of course, Lady Ball's new head coach, 
Kim Caldwell. My dad told me he watches and uh, he he pours into the comment section. I'm like, Dad, stay out of the comment section. A lot of a lo- lot of lot of trolls in there, and apparently somebody was upset because I, I take a drink of my coffee. And I guess you can hear it. And I do apologize. That's not as professional as I like for it to be. But when you're, by the way, how the pipe sound today? Pretty good, right? Much, much improved. When you're working through a lost voice, you do what you got to do. So I thought that was uh, really, really funny that somebody was getting aggravated about that. All right. On to a spring practice update. Not a huge update. Okay. I mean, again, there's, it is amazing to me how different basketball coaches are to football coaches. I mean, football coaches, they think they created the sport of football, okay? Nobody has ever run the option, the speed option. Nobody has ever thrown passes and red zone drills to the end zone. Can't film it, can't take pictures. I'm making fun of Tennessee and its coaching staff right now, but let me be clear. It's not just Tennessee and this coaching staff. It's all over the country. It's just hilarious. So my point is this, and my point of being a little, a little rude here on a Monday morning we don't get to say, we don't get to pick up on a lot of things when we go. We get to see some things, and I'm going to tell you what I get to see, but um, we get to see them stretch. We get to see defense. Somebody was getting on me the other day about how there's not many defensive notes. Guys, we see them do turnover circuits for the entirety of the time we're there. It's really hard to pick up some notes on what you see at practice when they're literally just doing ball drills and turnover circuits. Um, it just kind of is what it is, but it feels like Josh Heupel is really, really pleased with where his team is right now. Just knowing that what he inherited, and now kind of four years later, three years later, see 21 math, three years later heading into his fourth season, kind of where you are, it's just night and day. And um, I, I he kind of got that from him when he spoke after the second scrimmage at Neyland uh, Thursday night on a chilly night at Neyland. Um, feels like he likes where this roster is. Biggest question remaining for me is running back. How does Deshaun Bishop, who Josh Heupel mentioned by name after the second scrimmage and was bragging on him a lot, how does Deshaun Bishop finish this spring? How does Khalifa Keith finish this spring? Because, as we know and as we talked about, that will determine if Tennessee's going to go after and find somebody in the transfer portal. We'll have to see. Sounds like Deshaun Bishop had his best outing as a member of this football team Thursday night in that scrimmage. Um, can he continue to carry it over and be counted on for Tennessee when they get Peyton Lewis back, the true freshman, um, when they get him going, I guess. And then, of course, Cam Seldon, when they eventually get him back. All these guys to be kind of behind Cam Seldon. I'm intrigued. Um, I've mentioned his name a couple of times, but I really do think Jalen McMurray has been a really nice, pleasant surprise. The cornerback transfer from Temple. Because in the secondary, we talk about Jacoby Thomas, MTSU. We talk about Jamal McCoy from Oregon State. But we don't ever really talk about Jalen McMurray. Feels like he's been the most consistent, which is what Willie Martinez said last week. And it sounds like he had a really good scrimmage on, on Thursday night as well. Um, a lot of veterans, I don't want to say shut down, but a lot of veterans are not practicing right now or doing very, very little. Of course, they've been really smart with Keenan Peely, who's had a really good spring. They've been... Smart with Dylan Sampson, but he's been out there. They've been smart with Cooper Mays. Cooper Mays didn't scrimmage, and he's hardly out there anymore in terms of practice when we're there. John Campbell has been missing some time here lately. Jackson Lampley, who I'm not saying that they're like shutting these guys down. I mean, there's some nagging injuries. And for a guy like Jackson Lampley, he needs to be out there because he's trying to earn a starting position. But he didn't scrimmage the other night, and he's, he missed practice on Saturday as well, at least when we were out there. Um, so you look at that offensive line. And boy, it is makeshift to the max. Like the starting offensive line we were out there on Saturday was like, and I'm sure it looked like this in the in the scrimmage on Thursday night, like Bison Lang at center. Okay. Because Campbell is out, Dane Davis flipping over to play one of the tackles. So he's playing right tackle, Lance Hurt at left tackle. Feel good about your tackles. But you've got like Sham at guard. You've got like Aiden Bustle stepping up, playing some guard. I mean, I mean, it's it's it, William Satterwhite's in there. I mean, it's it's very new. Larry Johnson's over there at tackle, and it, it, it's it's a good thing. But it just shows that you you really have a depth issue. Um, it's a good thing right now because they're getting every rep they could possibly get. But man, it makes me kind of nervous. That orange and white game. 
Nico's back there taking a snap, and you got a line of casting characters up there like that. It's like, all right, get Nico in there, let him throw two or three passes, and get him out. But I think it's a great opportunity uh, for some of those guys. Trevor Duncan's continue to get some reps. Jesse Perry, uh, Gage Ginther, um, all those guys getting a lot of reps at offensive tackle right now, and so uh, that's that, that's that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of sh- you're kind of seeing now the depth issues. But the only way you can create some depth. It's so I'll allow these guys to, uh, to play a little bit. Um, Dante Thornton, I was hanging around. You know, we, we went and had the viewing period Saturday morning, and then I went back and did some of my work, and we're just kind of sitting around, you know, waiting for media after practice. And we hear everybody just scream and shout, and they're getting they're getting turned up a little bit. Ask somebody after practice kind of what that was. It was Dante Thornton making another play. Dante Thornton has had such a good spring. And again, I said this on the VolQuest two minute drill last week. What, and I think I said this on the show, kind of what it looked like when you brought in Chad, uh, uh, Chris Brazel was you brought in the replacement for Dante Thornton. But Dante Thornton this spring has said, ha, no, no, not so fast. I'm confident. I'm a year in the system. I'm healthy. Watch me work. And boy, has he worked. So again, kind of all this, there's not really an update, um, but they are in the final week of spring practice. They're going to, they're going to practice on Tuesday morning, on Thursday morning, They'll walk through on Friday, and then they'll have the orange and white game. And um, I think that a lot of veterans are being very selective in terms of the coaching staff being selective with their veterans on how much they can kind of do. But I uh, want to make sure that all these guys are getting a lot of reps, a lot, a lot, a lot of work, these young guys, and trying to create some depth and answer some of these questions heading into the second transfer portal window that's set to open next week. I think Josh Heupel, I think Willie Martinez, I think Tim Banks, really happy and pleased with where the secondary is right now, new look secondary. Josh Hopple said that it's athletic, it's quicker. They knew they needed to address it, and they did. So it's about seeing all those pieces kind of come together and seeing what it looks like in August. So anyway, that's kind of a jumbled notes that I'm like reading on my notepad here of where Tennessee football is in spring practice right now. We're Tennessee baseball. It's cruising. I'll tell you why. A series victory, the third in a row, the first series victory on the road at Auburn since 2005. How did Tennessee do it? I'll tell you that in a moment as we continue on with a Monday Lockdown Balls. All right, we got a final segment left here this Monday edition of Lockdown Balls. Don't forget to get those mailbag questions in for tomorrow's show, Tuesday's show at underscore Kaner at Lockdown Balls, and of course, on the Lockdown Balls YouTube channel. A lot of you guys want to know what's going on with baseball. Well, good weekend for baseball. As I mentioned in the tease, first series win at Auburn on the Plains since 2005. On Saturday's game, it was the first win at Plainsman Park since game one of the series at Auburn in 2016. It's been a house of horrors for Tennessee, and it certainly felt that way on Friday night when Tennessee jumped out to a 3-0 lead and then trailed 5-3 at the end of the first inning in Friday to begin the series. A.J. Causey for the second straight week got rocked. And it's not great. It's not great. I'm going to write about in the 3 one this week and something you got to look at. But overall, man, that was the worst part about it. Tennessee dropped the game on Friday, the game, the, the series opener, 9-5. to And A.J. Causey was not great. Tennessee had a base running blunder that was kind of atrocious at the most impromptu time. Um, Dean Curley left the bases loaded in that game in the second inning. So there was some frustration. I think it wasn't just AJ Causey, but it wasn't a good it wasn't a good outing whatsoever. Um, Aaron Combs gave you some great innings in relief, and that was something to really kind of take away from that game. But overall, not a great game. Tennessee drops that game, and it, it wasn't the best start. But then Tennessee explodes for two run rule victories in games two and three, winning on Saturday twelve to two, winning on Sunday nineteen to five. On Saturday, boy, you had Dalton Bargo, Dylan Drawling that both hit multi-homers in this game. Uh, Blake Burke has ended his hitting streak, and Blake Burke made history with his 40th, 41st career home run, now passing Luke Glipsius and sitting atop the uh, home run leaderboard for the University of Tennessee. That happened in that game. T- <coughs> Tennessee blasted, excuse me, Tennessee blasted six home runs in that game, and Tennessee blasted five home runs on Sunday. And back to Saturday, though, Drew Beam gave up a, a leadoff double, I think, Stranded him, or no, gave gave up a leadoff walk, stranded him at third base in the first, gave up a two-out double in the second, left him stranded, and then he retired 14 in a row from innings like two to six, two through six. 
ended up giving up two runs in the game, both off wild pitches. But Drew Beam, who not only needed a good outing for himself, but he needed a really good outing for Tennessee to have some to have some faith in it starting pitching. He came through in a monster way, just like he always does. QB1 was vintage QB1 on Saturday, and that was great to see. Um, but Tennessee just slugged its way, just slugged its way to a win um, against Auburn on Tuesday. I think the Tennessee scored 10 runs off six home runs. And then I think Christian Moore or somebody doubled in a pair for the last two, you know, last two runs of the ball game. But nonetheless, that was a story, home runs. And then home runs again was a story for Tennessee on Sunday, winning 19 to five. And it was Cal Stark, Cal Stark, who had a grand slam, the second grand slam in as many days. Christian Moore had a grand slam on, on Saturday. Um, it's the ninth grand slam of the season for Tennessee. That's a program record. And Tennessee now is just five shy of the Division One, uh, Division One record ever for most Grand Slams in a season, that was 14 by Arizona State back in 2003. But Cal Stark homer twice, once being a Grand Slam, the other being a three-run home run. He drove in seven runs. What a story for Cal Stark. Um, that happened. Tennessee overall on the weekend launched 14 home runs, with six on Saturday, five more on on Sunday. Tennessee is now tied Georgia for 87 home runs for the nation lead. They enter the weekend down 11 home runs to Georgia. Literally, think about that. They enter the weekend down 11 home runs to Georgia for the nation lead. Tennessee exits the weekend tied with Georgia with 87 home runs a season. Incredible. The win on Sunday was the 11th run roll victory of the year for Tennessee, 10 of which have come in seven innings. Tennessee's win on Sunday was the 14th of the year by 10 or more runs. Blake Burke... Not only is he the program record holder for home runs at 41, but he leads the nation, tied with the nation lead with 18 doubles with Texas Tech's Damian Bravo. His hit streak is improved to 22 games, and his on-base streak has improved to 30 games. Where's that rank in Tennessee lore? Well, I'll tell you. The 22-game hit streak remains fourth longest in program history, Condris Holloway, heard of that guy? 27-game hit streak in 1975. That's the longest. Jeff Pickler in 1998 had a 26-game hit streak. Justin Ross had a 24-game hit streak in that same season. And then here comes Burks at 22, so the fourth longest. There's no official record for the on-base percentage in terms of Tennessee hasn't kept that log, but for reference here in recent memory, Liam Spence had a 50-game on-base streak in 2021. So, Burke's 20 away from that. Got some work to do. Drew Gilbert had uh, did it 28 straight games in 2022. Christian Moore did it in 20 straight games last year. So some pretty elite company there. And oh, yeah, about Christian Moore, he's now homered 40 times in his career, sitting one back of Blake Burke for the, for the program record, tied with Luke Lipsius for the second most in, in program history. Christian Moore just had one of those weekends, man. He was on fire. Bottom line. Tennessee had one of those weekends at the plate. You're going to need to outslug a lot of teams this year, in my opinion, because you just don't have enough pitching. But when you're scoring 12 or 19 runs a game, you're going to win a whole lot of those games. But Tennessee was pitching well in those games too. Drew Bean was great in game two. Nate Snead was good out of the bullpen. Xander Seacrest, though, was a, a tough start for him. He rebounded, retired six straight before exiting the ball game. Um, Tennessee pitched well overall in the wins in this series. But Tennessee, fourth straight series win, third straight series win, excuse me, the fourth time in league play already in four tries that they've had a game three winner take all rubber match. And uh, get ready because the defending national champions come to town next weekend in LSU. Much like Auburn, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled about that record in conference play for LSU. Okay, might be a little bit different this year for sure, but they still have. A lot of horses in the barn, if you will. Pretty good ball club, but that's coming up next weekend. Of course, you got the orange and white game next weekend. It's going to be a big weekend on Rocky Top and uh, Tennessee baseball, improving to twenty six and six on the year, seven and five in conference play. First time all year they've been two games above five hundred in conference play, and um, yeah, Tennessee baseball just continues to win, and that happened on the plains this weekend, thanks to the bats and thanks to the home run ball. All right, we will get in your questions, your comments, your concerns. Whatever you guys have on tomorrow's show, on Tuesday's show, send those questions in on Tennessee football, recruiting, baseball, basketball, 
Lady Vols Hire, all that and more, at underscore Kaner and at Locked On Balls. And uh, of course, leave a comment here on the YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys for being here so much. Thank you so much, you everydayers, for making the show what it is. We will do it again tomorrow on a Tuesday. Until then, this is Locked On Balls. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, everybody.